I can say that I come from a football family because my father himself was a footballer. He represented Mizoram in many occasions. After he retired from football, he even became the manager of the Mizoram football team. Uh, he was in a police department and he was one of the main men for the beginning of the foot Mizoram police football team. Even after he retired from playing football, he was the manager and coach. He traveled all around India with, with the football team. So I can say that football is in my blood. And we are three brothers. We used to play together even at a very young age. So back then we did not have an access to, the, to, to any internet facilities, no cable TV in Mizoram. And we do not have a newspaper which writes on football. We used to listen to the BBC radio with, with my elder brother. E even those days we, we started following European football where most of the people, not only in my state, I can say that in India during the 80s, not many people followed European football, but maybe because of my father's influence, me and my elder brother, we already started following uh, the European football back in the 80s. I always believe in the footballing talent of the Mizos. I used to say that the Mizo players who played in the I League and back then in the National Football League, they were not the best players back home. Uh, they were only the fortunate ones who had the opportunity to train outside, especially in the Tata Football Academy and other football academy. When exposed to this kind of academy, uh, they excelled at the highest level. They even represented India at the age group level. That was in the early, at the start of the, the new millennium. I used to say that we have equally good player back home, maybe a better player back home. If given the right kind of opportunity, they will be able to play at the highest level of Indian football. I strongly believe in the talent of the Mizos back home, the local players. So when Shillong Lajong started their journey in, in the I League, they recruited the local players, those who are not training the proper football academy. I, I helped them recruiting some local Mizo players from Mizoram. I sent them down to Shillong and they qualified for the I League and they showed that, they proved that they are good enough to play in the, in, in the I League. So because of that, I, I mean, that motivated me to start something in Mizoram. If given the right kind of opportunity, the boys here in Mizoram will be able to play at the highest level. I think we have proved that with the start of the Mizoram Premier League and with the recent success of the Mizoram football. One cannot really express how deep football has grown, I mean, has penetrated deep into the Mizoram society. Because I can say with confidence that this is one of the states in India where football has an influence even in the, in the local election as well as the legislative election as well. Because, you know, the, the candidates during the legislative assembly election, what they do is they, are, they, they promise to the local people that they will help them build a playground of their own. There is a saying that in Mizo localities, in each and every village where you go, there are two things which you will find in common. One is a church and one is a football playground. Uh, that, I think that is in a nutshell what football is all about to, to the Mizo society. If you go to the villages, one of the things that which you'll find at, at first is the playground and which will be supported by maybe at the backyard, uh, there will be a church. If you go and speak to the villagers, what they will tell you is how good their player are, comparatively speaking with the neighboring villages. The Mizos, we were at war with our neighboring villages all those years back in the centuries. But now we cannot continue that war, but we have continued that at the football ground. There are lots of inter-village football which is going on in every corner of Mizoram. And apart from that, we have volunteers at every level. We are talking about the footballers who are professionals, who are earning thousands, who are earning lakhs. And the football, maybe the ones who are running the football authority in the Mizoram Football Association and maybe at the national level. But there are many, many volunteers, even at the smallest of villages, who are working for free when it comes to football. They are giving their time and services to, for the upliftment of football, which they will happily do it. So, you know, 
uh, one cannot really express how football has influenced the society. Uh, the, the importance of football in, in Mizo society cannot really be uh, explained uh, in, in a few lines. It is way beyond that. I became the secretary of the Mizoram Football Association in 2011. I used to say that I was a reluctant secretary. I did not really want to become the secretary because of my engagement in other activities. And apart from that, uh, honestly speaking, I was not very happy with the way football was run in the state. So I decided not to be a part of the Mizoram Football Association anymore. Before that, I was one of the executive committee members. But people from all corners, uh, they came to me and they asked me to stand for the election uh, from the football footballers, from the clubs, even from the existing uh, administrators. They asked me to stand for the post. After much thinking, I decided to stand for the election. Fortunately for me, the old secretary did not stand for the election when I, he heard that I am standing for the election. So there was no election and I became elected unopposed. So after becoming the secretary, there are three areas in which I want to I want to start uh, developing football in Mizoram. Uh, number one is coach education because without good coaches you can't have good footballers. And number two is refereeing education. Uh, we speak about football, but if you don't have good referees, who will be able to uh, who will be able to guide your footballers? You cannot grow. And number three is to have a proper football league. I used to say that uh, until and unless our boys have the opportunity to play in Mizoram for for at least uh, two three months on a stretch. We cannot have a, a proper football uh, development. So the three areas which which I choose were uh, coach education, refereeing education, and to start a football league. I was very fortunate to have a connection with Zonet Cable TV, who came out with uh, with the offer of starting the Mizoram Premier League. We, those days, we, we did not speak in terms of lakhs. Uh, the price money which we can offer were a few, a few thousands, maybe 20, 30 thousands at the most. But Zonet Cable TV, they came with a huge offer by Mizoram Standard during that time in 2012. That was, uh, they, they promised us that they will give us 25 lakhs to run the football league. It was like a dream come true for all of us. When we started the Mizoram Premier League, the aim was to produce more footballers at the national level uh, who will be able to compete with the rest of the nation and who will be able to play at the I league and the highest level of Indian football. But if you look at the success story of Mizoram football after 2012, after the start of the Mizoram Premier League, it is un unbelievable. Within such a sp short span of time, we have achieved so much, which is way beyond my expectation, honestly speaking. Because 2012, we started the Mizoram Premier League. By 2013, we, we won the uh, Junior foot, National Football Championships, which is called BC Roy Trophy. Uh, that was for the first time. Before that, we have won a lot of sub-juniors, but junior, for the first time, we won in 2013. That was with the Mizoram Premier League under-17 boys. After winning the... I mean, that, that bunch of footballers, many of them... They have graduated to the I-League as well as the ISL. They even played for the national team now. After 2013, the big change, uh, the game changer, I will say, was 2014 when we won the Santos Trophy. Because many people say that Mizos were good enough only to play at the sub-junior and the junior level. And they used to criticize us because since we did not have any proper result at the, at, at the senior level, they used to say that we are good enough only for the sub-juniors and the juniors. But we proved in 2014 that we could be the champions of India by lifting the uh, Santos Trophy. We almost uh, comprehensively defeated all the opponents which came on our way. Uh, we even defeated the former champions on, on our way to become the champions. That was 2014. And 2015, we proved at the national games that 2014 was not a fluke. Because 2015, again, at the national games, we were the champions in the men's football. And in, in the same year, ISOL FC qualified for the I League by becoming the champions of uh, national second division. Then again, 2017 is the big one. ISOL FC becoming the champions of India by becoming the champions of I League. 
So we have proved that after we started the Mizoram Premier League, at, at all the age group level from the grassroots to the sub-juniors to the junior, as well as to the senior level in the interstate championship that is Central Trophy and National Games, and to the club level, Isol FC proved that Mizos are one of the powerhouses of Indian football. In the Mizoram Football Association, we, we have a short-term and as well as a long-term goals. We are very fortunate to that uh, the All India Football Federation from FIFA, they are going to give us artificial turf at a place called Sairang, which is uh, one hour drive from Aizol, where we are going to have our own full-fledged training centers, where we are hopeful of producing more and more national level footballers. This is a long-term goal. The long-term plan is to produce uh, players from our own academy uh, who, who will be we will be looked after by, by, uh, by our own coaches. Back then we used to speak of the academy outside Mizoram, but now we can dream of having our own academy in our backyard. Then the short term goal is, uh, we are in the process of starting a, a, fo I mean, a football league for the under 12 as well as the under 15, and a women's league. 2012, we already started the Mizoram Premier League and the Mizoram Premier League under 17. But there's a huge gap between the grassroots and to, in between the grassroots and the and the junior football that is the under 17. So to fill that gap, uh, we we plan to start what we call as under 15 football league. This, with the help of Tata Trust, we are going to start in January 2018. This will be for at least a minimum of four months. We are going to start under 15 football league and under 12. We will be able to start it at, at, at the beginning of 2018 again. This will be a competition for the for the boys who are under the age of 12. Then apart from that, we have tied up with 81 Foundation. It's an NGO based out of Delhi uh, to start what we term it as Young Legends League. Uh, this we are going to start at Champai in November 2018. Champai is one of the district capitals of Mizoram bordering Myanmar which is uh, some seven hours journey from Aizol. In Champai, we are going to start an Young Legends League where we are going to have a comprehensive football league for the for, for different age group level from starting from under eight, under 10 and under 12. Eight One Foundation, they are going to provide us with with the, with the whatever we need to, to start this league, which we are hopeful that this will bring a world of change in the way we look, off, we, we look at the grassroots football. Because without competition, a player cannot really grow. This is going to be a kind of a competition where you learn how to play during, your, during, during, your, during the weekdays and at every weekend, especially on Saturday. We are going to conduct this uh, youth league where the players will play at least a minimum of 33 matches in a year, which means once they, once they reach the age of 15, they will have at least uh, more than 100 competitive matches under their belt, which we are hopeful that will really help the boys to progress to become a professional footballer. This is one of the one of the short-term goals which we have. And women's football is one area in which we need to improve. We, we have won a lot when it comes to men's football and the boys, and sub-junior boys as well as the junior boys. But the only national level championship which we have won in the, in, in the women's football is the sub-junior girls football which we won two years back. We don't really have uh, players which are, which, we, which are good enough to represent Mizoram at the senior women's level because we do not have any senior women's footballer. We, we, we are forced to send some junior footballers to play at the national uh, senior women's football championships because of the unavailability of the senior women's. So to to fill that gap, we are starting a football uh, women's league, which we are hopeful of starting in, in the, by the end of 2017 in in Aizawa. Age fraud is one of the biggest problems in Indian football uh, because you know one can one can easily have a fake birth certificate at his disposal without having much effort. Uh, we are trying our best to do away with this age fraud. We have tried our level best, even though we did not succeed 100%, but we are closing to 100% now. 
we have made it mandatory that all the footballers who will represent Mizoram will have their birth certificate scanned and checked from the government offices first. And apart from that, uh, with the introduction of the Aadhaar card system, uh, we have made it mandatory that in all the age group competitions in which Mizoram Football Association is conducting, we, we, we are in the process of making it mandatory that one has to produce an Aadhaar card. So, uh, this, will be, uh, this will be really helpful in checking the age cheating in, in football. Not only in football, age cheating and age fraud is really a big problem in Indian sports because since we do not have any scientific proof or medical proof of one's age without an MRI being done, which is not easily accessible for most of the sports person, it is a really, really big problem. Honestly speaking, Mizoram, even the Mizoram footballers, we were not free from age cheating those days. It still is existing in Mizoram, but we are trying to minimize it and we are trying to stop it 100%. We are closing it to, I can say with confidence that we are moving uh, at least to 80% to of checking the age fraud, I mean, we, which, is, which was uh, really, really on a rampage uh, back in the 90s and the, the, uh, the beginning of the millennium. Since Mizoram is a hilly place, it is very difficult to find uh, an area in which uh, to, to build a football ground. So because of that lack of infrastructure is one, one area in which uh, we are really struggling. Even, even though the government which uh, the present government of Mizoram is a pro, uh, proactive when it comes to building infrastructure in sports, but we were, it, it was neglected for all these years. Had we have a better infrastructure days back, we could have achieved what we have achieved now, maybe at least uh, five, five years before. But we are slowly moving into that uh, direction. But having said that, I, c I still feel that if we are given the right kind of infrastructure for training of the boys, I mean the footballers, we will be able to achieve much higher than what we have achieved so far. One of the biggest things which happened in Indian football is the hosting of the Under-17 World Cup in 2017. Even though we were ousted in the first hurdle, I still believe that we have put up a good show because uh, nobody believed that Indian will be able to compete with the, uh, with, with the best of the nation in, 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 in the World Cup. Even though the, the goal margin were huge, when, when, if you carefully look at the style of play in the, in, 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 during the 90 minutes in which India were a part of, I can say that we were not really outplayed by our bigger opponents. So this shows that when it comes to football, we, we, we have the talent. And apart from that, the general public and even the central government, they started having interest in football. Uh, it, is, it, it is a known fact that India is a cricket country. But now people started f talking about football. Uh, it, is, it, it is really, it is really uh, well versed in, 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 in the tagline which they have given. Football takes over in India with this uh, FIFA World Cup 2017, uh, under 17 FIFA World Cup. I have been asked many a times uh, by journalists as well as football fans and, and, and friends about what, my, what is my personal opinion on I-League and the ISL thing. Uh, personally, I feel that uh, there cannot be two football leagues in a country. At present, uh, we have the, the I-League going on, which we officially term it as the highest uh, football league in the country. But there is a bigger league which is existing in India called Indian Super League, the ISL. It is high time that we merge these two together because without these two being merged, football just cannot grow. If you look at the statistics of some of the players last season, they have played more than 50 matches. Uh, after they finish the after they finish the ISL, they they are joining another club in in the I League. And if they are called for the national camp duty, they will have to play at least 11 months in in the calendar year, which is uh, too much for a player. And apart from that, in order to grow football in a country, we need to have one single uh, one single football league where we have a proper structure in which you have a first division, second division, third division and so on. But now we have an I-League which is the which is 
officially the highest league of India, but we do not have any second division under I League, even though there is an existing second division system, which really is not a football league. It is like a, uh, a prolonged football tournament. And apart from that, we do not have any stable club in, in, in the second division. If football is to grow in one's country, we need to have a proper structured league where you have a promotion and relegation system going on from the first division to the second tier to the third tier. Now, what happened in India is you cannot, you cannot promote your team from I League to ISL and the team in the ISL cannot be relegated to I League. So this is in, in, in a football sense, this is like something which are unheard of. This is for the first time maybe in the football history of the world that there are two, two leagues existing in one country. So it is high time that we merge these two together for the growth of football in, in, in India. Mizoram is a small state. It, it, is, it is one of the remotest states in the country. And apart from that, it is one of the, one of the thinly populated states in India. We only have uh, a little more than 10 lakhs population. I used to say that had there been 10 Salt Lake Stadium in Mizoram, it, it could fill the, the whole population of the, of, of the Mizos. <clears throat> we are that small. Even though we are small in population, but when it comes to football, we have produced a uh, few results which we can be proud of. But uh, we, this, we, we have done this with, with, with the contribution from the society who are running their own club. And we do not have any multinational companies uh, presence in, 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 in the state. We do not have big sponsor. I mean, I urge the I urge the multinational companies and and, and, and the big corporates and the and and, and the PSUs uh, to start in using the whatever CSR fund available to to invest in Mizoram, which I am sure that it will be it will be used in the correct manner, so that it will produce a result which. Uh, I'm sure which we have produced with the little resources we have now. Uh, in, in order to grow football in Mizoram, we need more and more infrastructure, we need more and more investment, but we cannot get that in Mizoram because we don't have any multinationals presence here. So I urge the multinational companies of India, as well as the PSU, uh, to start look east, maybe to, to, to start uh, look east towards Mizoram and help us in promoting football here in this tiny state. The success story of Mizo footballers is very recent. Uh, the so-called first professional footballer from Mizoram is Esmal Somtluanga. He is still an active player. He is still playing for I-League in this season, 2017. Even though we had a few semi-professional footballers who played at the Kolkata League back in the 70s as, yeah, and even in the 90s, but Mama is, is the first full-fledged professional footballers we have and he is still an active player, which shows how recent the, 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 the football story of Mizoram is, how, how short is her history when it comes to national level football. Mama came from a very humble family and he was fortunate to be picked by the Tata Football Academy scout and he, he started his football career from uh, Tata Football Academy. That is why I used to say that Mama, had he not been picked by Tata Football Academy, he will be nowhere to be seen in the national football scene. Because when he was picked by the Tata Football Academy scout, he, never, he did not have any idea about what Football Academy is all about. He, he told me that he never heard about East Bengal before he joined Tata Football Academy. That was how ignorant he was. But Mama was a fortunate boy to be picked up by the Tata Football Academy scout and admitted in Tata Football Academy and eventually played for East Bengal. But there are equally good players back home in Mizoram who do not have that kind of opportunity. Uh, the ones who are getting this opportunity, most of them reach the level, at least the I-League level, if not, for, if, they, if not the national team. Uh, one of the biggest stars we have now is uh, JJ Lalpeklua. He's, he's from a town which is uh, six, seven hours drive from Aizol. He came to Aizol after he passed his class 10. He wanted to join a football academy, even though we did not have really full-fledged academy in Mizoram. JJ, he did not have any football education, football coaching, until he, he, he passed his 10 standard. 
it shows that JJ is a raw talent who, who has been picked up by the Mizoram Football Association scout and sent him down for the India under-19 trials and selected by the coaches and now he's one of the big stars in Indian, I mean, in Indian football. Now, I mean, these are the two examples which I can say that uh, there is a natural talent in Mizoram when it comes to football, but this talent needs to be nurtured. For that, we need proper coach education, proper uh, football academy, and apart from that, we need an exposure, even though we have provided them here at the Mizoram Premier League. But uh, ideally, we would like to have a more professionally run uh, league or maybe pro professionals in football who will be able to help us uh, climbing another ladder. There are, there are a few promising Mizo footballers. After, after reaching certain height, uh, they were nowhere to be seen in the in, in Indian football. It is because of the it is because of the uh, indiscipline as well as unprofessional approach. Uh, when when you carefully look at these players, if you if you if you if you go and look 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 at their background, they are coming from a very challenged uh, economically challenged background, and apart from that. Uh, unhealthy environment in the family where you know even even their parents are drunkards and and they're coming from a very poor background so for uh, i mean we we have learned from the past that we we need to educate the the players not only in football but uh in in in, in all in all areas for that um, the mizoram football team when they were about to participate in the national football championships we used to hire some psychologists and psychiatrists to give us some, uh, I mean, to, to take a few, a few class in, in sports psychology. And apart from that, uh, we, we have a campaign uh, towards anti-tobacco. And, and of course, uh, we, we have lots of people coming in with, with, with who, who are, a, willing to help us in educating our players. Having said that, uh, we, we still have a long way to go when it comes to uh, pro, I mean, helping the players I mean, mentally. And mental health is one area in which we really need to work. I mentioned, I mentioned that Mizoram is already one of the powerhouses of Indian football. That is one area of looking at it. But having said that, I still feel that we, 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 we we are still following the footpath of, uh, of the bigger states when it comes to football. What we have achieved in the last couple of years, the other state, they have achieved it way back. So we, we, we need to learn. We need to remain humble. We, 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 need to, we, we need to realize the fact that what we have achieved now is, has, has been achieved by the bigger footballing states way back. So uh, we, we, we can say that Mizoram football is growing, it's going in the right direction, but still a long way to go before we achieve the goals.